Welcome to this health supplier segment here on Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us today. Our guest is Tally Derry. She's CEO of Better Air. And she's joining us here on the program to discuss how probiotics can be used to purify the air quality and surfaces inside hospitals. Welcome to the program, Tally. How are you today? I'm wonderful. Thank you very much for having me. Give us a bit of background about yourself. So I am the CEO of Better Air. I actually uh, come from a finance background, noticing um, the trajectory of where uh, our environment is going. Long term, I uh, jumped ship ship and uh, um, started doing the work in the environmental space. I've heard of probiotics and I understand their use, but I don't believe that I've ever heard of them helping to clean environments indoor or otherwise. How does Better Air's Envirobiotics system actually work? Um, so that's a great question. Um, we actually are first to market solution uh, for indoor environments treating not only the air, but the surfaces and objects as well. Um, so basically, the theory is, is very simple. We have, we're applying um, what we already know from the environment inside our body, that we need microbial balance. And uh, if we don't have it, certain systems just break down because they depend on a microbial balance inside our body, uh, just like our digestive system and intestinal tract. Uh, concentration is related to lack of probiotics inside the body, as well as a slew of other diseases from cancer to, to autism. And um, we have the technology today to see, you know, what happens if we're missing certain bacteria that are essential uh, for um, a balanced function of certain systems inside our body. We then took a look into, A, what's going on in the environment, indoor environment, and the related diseases that are connected to the sick building syndrome Mm -hmm. worldwide, especially in hospitals. But we also saw uh, that, and there's enough research today that shows that a home or a building or an office is an environment as well, meaning it has a microbiome. Uh, There's slew of bacteria, allergens, and mold that coexist together with us. We come in touch with them. Uh, we breathe them. Uh, so we come into a respiratory touch with them as well. Is this a, a traditional air purifying system um, or is better air system much different than a traditional air purifier system? Um, we're doing the exact opposite of what a purifier would do ordinarily. How is it opposite? Um, we decided, I mean, we just look at the data. And with what's going on in hospitals today, with hundreds, about 100,000 people die um, through uh, hospital or healthcare acquired infections uh, in the U.S. alone, um, hundreds of thousands of others are getting uh, infected and do not die, but they're still affected by it. Um, we have um, decided to do the exact opposite of what was done before because it's just not seemed to be working. Um, so what we do is the better systems release probiotic bacteria into the environment, the indoor environment, starting from the air ducts. So our machines connect to air ducts uh, in all kinds of environments, from small to largest, okay. to skyscrapers. And um, those bacteria are essential for our well-being, meaning they already exist in buildings today. We're just increasing their numbers to the point that they control uh, microbially the indoor environment. Uh, When they do, um, I will emphasize we don't kill other bacteria. So our bacteria do not operate by killing other bacteria, allergens, or mold. Um, They simply uh, control the food resources. And since we keep releasing them into the environment every half an hour to an hour, depending on the program we choose, they also reproduce in the environment. They start a life cycle once released. And when they reproduce, they control by numbers uh, the space, the oxygen, and the resources available to other pathogens, allergens, and mold. Is there any maintenance that's required? Or is this an ecosystem, basically, that's just going to maintain itself indefinitely? The only maintenance that's required is a replacement of a probiotic liquid That's the one that's being vaporized into the environment. Um, And that takes place either between one month to once every six months, depending on the usage of the building, the age of the building, and 
the problem we're trying to fight. So if there are major orders, um, if it, if the building is very sick or the people in it um, are, are challenged um, medically and, and there is more exposure to pathogenic bacteria, then we release uh, enough probiotics to or in biobiotics to uh, treat the building, and then we don't treat people; we treat the environment. Uh, we, and then we would change the bottle of probiotics in, inside the device, uh, let's say every month. Um, if the building is an ordinary usage, it would be every three months. And if it's a healthy, clean, new building, a green building uh, that's just being used for, let's say, an office or regular uh, housing, then we would use uh, we would um, release uh, a bottle, a one, one liter bottle of probiotic every six months. So it really depends on the usage. Either way, it's uh, very cost effective and, uh, and long term treatment, meaning it's a 24 7 treatment. Um, and uh, most importantly, it treats not only the air, uh, which we feel that if you treat just the air, um, and that's the major challenge that other systems currently have. If you treat just the air, you're basically treating maybe 5 to 10% of the problem, as bacteria in general do not reside in the air. They reside, they colonize on surfaces and inside objects. So they would, um, they're would, they most prevalent in air ducts, in inside mattresses, under carpets, on door handles, shared objects. A magazine in a, in a, in a clinic uh, in the doctor's office, that's where you could find them. If you treat just the air, you're not going to pick those up right. and treat them. Now, um, obviously, you're looking to get the word out. What, in your opinion, is the best way to make hospitals and some of these other facilities that you've been talking about aware of the envirobiotic system? So, um, in order to make them aware of, um, of, of the availability of, of this solution, um, we basically work with, um, with different establishments. Uh, we educate them. We show them our, our studies and our results in different environments, different bacteria, different allergens and mold. And uh, through this learning process, um, we do a comparison. We do some studies with major universities uh, throughout the U.S. and worldwide to establish our efficacy and, of course, safety. Um, the bacteria that we use are on the grass list of, of uh, FDA, so it's generally regarded as safe bacteria. Um, again, we've been consuming the type or the family of bacteria for, I guess, millions of years. And um, so they are highly um, safe. And um, this is also a biological way of treatment as opposed to chemical. Uh, it's totally natural, 100% natural, and, and long-term uh, solution as opposed to temporary. Um, also, the major uh, incentive for hospitals especially is that... Um, um, what happens with other systems today, we call ourselves a complementary system. So if a hospital would treat uh, the indoors with UV light in their air duct, um, the major challenge that's being created is the super bug UV light today. Um, I, I would equate it to giving the building 24-7 antibiotics because that's what UV lights have for filters and other technologies today, uh, that's what they're designed to do, to kill bacteria. Um, there are three challenges with that. Uh, one is that they kill all bacteria, meaning creating a shortage of good bacteria inside the building. Second is uh, that they keep killing bacteria, and therefore, uh, whatever you try to kill repetitively, as we all know from inside our body, um, they create resilience towards what kills them, so they become stronger with the generations, mm -hmm. um, so they change their life cycle every second, and we end up changing ours every 80 years, which obviously um, you can see the disadvantage for Absolutely. us human beings yes. residing in the building. And the third issue that, um, that's uh, being created is that um, what you kill, you only kill. It's, this is, um, the current technologies are basically passive technologies. So they only kill what goes through them. They don't go to the dirt. And uh, when you release probiotics into the air, into the air duct, with the airflow, they get uh, dispersed everywhere in the environment. And probiotics would go. The, the probiotic bacteria would go 
everywhere where other bacteria would go. So they would go into the matrices, which obviously their size is an advantage, the small size, uh, the micron size droplet of vapor is an advantage. We can easily penetrate into carpets and fabric seats and, and, and mattresses. And that's basically where the culprit of the problem is. Where can we go online and get some more information about Better Air and the Envirobiotic system? So our website is www.betterairus.com and you can get us a little information uh, for specific projects. We, of course, uh, can be contacted uh, directly and um, we have our team um, to go through a process of education and um, pilot in specific environments that have specific problems that we might be able to help with. Uh, and uh, we're very happy to share the knowledge and, and, and advance a biological solution for indoor sick building syndrome. Thank you very much. Tally Derry, CEO of Better Air. Thank you very much for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program can be found at hpr.fm and also at healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in, and download at SoundCloud. And be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm.